um, which played a huge advantage for us later on down the line. Mm-hmm. Um, and then hearing about that, so then from there we went on to how can we bring indoor farming to Chicago and the West Side community yeah. where we can bring produce year-round. With, with this technique, we can bring produce year-round. So we asked ourselves, how can we do that? At the cheapest cost, mm-hmm. to be to produce the highest quality and be most effective. Yeah, um, and that led us to where we are now. Uh, you know, God willing, a lot of blessings and luck along the way, and um, you know, we were blessed with this facility. And yeah, I mean, it's a thirty thousand square foot facility that we're in, and we'll pump we'll pump a pounds and pounds of lettuce heads, greens heads, and like he said, we're right on the west side community, right in the heart of the community. Exactly. So Amen. when you ride past, you might not expect to see to see us here. One hundred percent. We're here. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Kicking It with JB. I know it sounds a little for, foresty in the background, uh, but today I'm with Don Patterson Jr. Don Patterson Jr. Man, and, and where are we? I feel like I feel like I'm in a, in a tropic somewhere. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? I got plants behind me. You know what I'm saying? Wind yeah, we're here. It's hot in here. It is a little hot. You know, it's probably about 85 degrees in here right now. 85 to 90. Yeah, but where but where are we located? We're located in Chicago, right in the Austin area and Humble Park area. So right on the west side of Chicago, yeah. the great Chicago area. 85 degrees in, in yeah. March. Yeah, March. End of March. It's cold outside. Yeah. So, <laughs> so obviously we are we, we are inside right now. So so what so what is this place we're in right now? For sure, for sure. So right now we're at Urban Transformation Networks, uh, one of our sites, our main facility site. Uh, we're sitting right now actually in an aquaponic farm which is uh, an indoor growing technique that we use to cultivate fish and plants year-round in Chicago. So January, February, March, we're growing fresh produce, leafy greens. Um, yeah, so we're located right now at our main site, and this is our operating site. This is where we grow our plants. So you'll see in the background plants growing and got different greens growing throughout the year and yeah, all so, the things going. So that, that, that is crazy, like, that you have a, you said a, a, it's an aqua pond. Aquaponics. Aquaponics. Yep. And, the and two the, words are aqua, meaning fish life, mm-hmm. and then ponics, yeah. meaning hydroponics. That's just crazy that you have this in the middle of Chicago. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I've, ne- I've never yeah. even, I never even heard of it to be honest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So this is, so you grow plants here, and then what do y'all do with those plants? Because I, I remember we were talking about a little bit, but like you yeah. got, y'all got classes. You know what I'm saying? You give them to churches and stuff like yeah. that. So, yeah. what, so what do y'all be doing with the plants you grow? Yeah, for sure. So with the plants specifically that we do, um, we do a lot of things. Uh, I mean, the biggest thing I'm proud of, we donate a lot. Uh, last year, we were able to reach up to 21,000 lettuce heads that we were able to donate through our church partners within mm-hmm. the West Side community. Uh, we also do sell the local farmers markets, restaurants. Um, that's how we generate capital here. Mm-hmm. And... Um, yeah, and we eat them, of course. I definitely take some, I definitely take some home with me. <laughs> don't uh, I don't really buy greens from the store anymore. Yeah, uh, my greens are more superior. Uh, hey, okay. <laughs> And uh, I'm pretty sure we'll get into that a little bit later. But, yeah, yeah those are the main activities that with the greens. Between giveaway, um, selling them to the community. You know, mm-hmm. we're big on sustainability, Amen. healthy uh, food access. So we're located in the same area that we're looking to pump greens into. Mm. Wow, that's amazing. So... Then what, what what is your what is your title here? Like what like what like what is your job title here? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I am executive uh executive director here, co founder. Um started a business along with my father in two thousand thirteen. That's fine. Um and kind of grew to what it is now. Yeah. Pretty much, I got I wear all hats. You know, I wear I got yeah. I got I got to be a trick of the trade because we're still a young company. Uh-huh. About uh, eight years in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mainly oversee all projects, all partner relationship develop, all partner relationships, uh-huh. uh, business development. Yeah. Um, I handle uh, also handle the finances alongside my father. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what my degree and background is in, and is uh, my undergraduate is actually in accounting. Really. And then I did my MBA, yeah. did my MBA with a concentration in finance. For real. Yep. Accounting. So. Uh, that short story. Accounting mm-hmm. was the worst class I've ever taken in college. That's yo. why I took it. <laughs> Accounting was the worst class I ever taken. It was the only class I ever got a D in yeah. in college was accounting. Man. It was terrible. And I literally have nightmares about that class and that teacher, bro. 
But that's crazy. So you're so you graduated with one. with an accounting degree and what else? Yeah, and then I went to pursue my master's with a concentration in finance. Mm. Um, wow. Didn't complete. Only got about six, seven classes to go. But yeah. uh, I that's didn't really feel like I needed to finish school um, to do what I needed to do. Yeah. So uh, just went to focus on developing what I needed to develop. One hundred percent. So like, what? So what? What got you and your father into this building? Because I mean, into this like industry because this is seem this yeah, seems like yeah. very like far off like you know what i'm saying you don't really <laughs> from see accounting and finance exactly you know yeah what I'm saying? yeah for sure because sure. it's funny because we was we was talking before this we low-key had like the same experience yeah like in high school you know playing ball both running backs yeah both transferred from a uh, big large school public schools to a private school yeah so what brought you here to like you know what i'm saying to an urban farm yeah yeah for sure um it's kind of crazy very organic yeah. It wasn't nothing. I feel like that's how it always happens. Yeah, it really is. It was nothing like we planned this to happen. Yeah. It started uh, starting in 2013. We had a mission. This was when the Chicago violence was really high. Mm-hmm. Uh, when they were labeling it Chicago, Chicago, Chirac. Chirac. Yeah. yeah, Chirac. And we wanted to kind of do our part in um, bringing awareness to the violence, mm-hmm. doing our part in trying to decrease the violence, knowing yeah. that we couldn't really stop it. So we came up with a whole campaign. And I actually contributed a lot of that to my father with uh, Don't Shoot, We're Gardening. And don't shoot with gardening. Don't shoot with gardening, and that was our that was our logo. That was our campaign logo, and it, we, we you would see it at different church sites within the West Side community. You see uh-huh. a banner hanging up that would say "Don't shoot with gardening." Yeah, and we start off very small that we did local community gardens at all our church partners, uh-huh. and from there where you see that sign "Don't shoot with gardening," you'll see kids in there. Garden, and we are teaching them education on how to grow peppers, how to grow plants, mm. all the science and bio things that they need to grow to cultivate their yeah. own produce. Teaching them all the education behind eating healthy, all the benefits around nut- nutrition. Uh-huh. So it started very much with a drive to do something for the community and provide and also give education. Yeah, um, so very small, very organic, and then. And I probably want to say around 2016, me and my father, we went to a conference, you know. Once you're working at something, and what I found out is, like, once you're working at something and, and this is what you're doing, uh-huh. you know, things things come to you just from you being inside that industry. Yeah. For example, like, if you're in finance, being in there so long, you're going to pick up on things that the school didn't necessarily teach you, right? Mm. Versus somebody that hasn't worked in the field yet. Yeah. Um, so this being in here, I was able to – we just – fell into a hair about a conference happening at Navy Pier. Yeah. Went to this conference. It was one of those things where I think I might have been like 24 or something like that. And uh-huh. my dad was trying to drag me to another event. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not, I'm done with these plants. Like, I'm trying to move <laughs> on. And nah, he's like, no, nah, no, nah, we got to see this. So he took me to this event and it was about aquaponics. Uh-huh. And aquaponics. It's about aquaponics. And they presented to us. They broke it down to how it worked. They, um... They showed us how it can, how you can use minimal space yeah. to grow more produce. I'm gonna say that again. You can use, I can grow more produce with smaller space. Mm. Um, and then that's when the bills, and that's when that's yeah. when the accounting and business background started kicking in. Exactly, um, which played a huge advantage for us later on down the line. Mm-hmm. Um, and then hearing about that, so then from there we went on to how can we bring indoor farming to Chicago and the West Side community yeah. where we can bring produce year-round. With, with this technique, we can bring produce year-round. So we ask ourselves, how can we do that at the cheapest cost mm-hmm. to, be, to produce the highest quality and be most effective? Yeah. Um, and that led us to where we are now. Uh, I mean, you know, God willing, a lot of blessings and luck along the way. And, um, you know, we were blessed with this facility. And yeah. I mean, it's a thirty thousand square foot facility that we're in, and we'll pump we'll pump up pounds and pounds of lettuce heads, greens heads, and like he said, we're right on the west side community, right in the heart of the community. Exactly. So Amen. when you ride past, you might not expect to see to see us here. One hundred percent. We're here. Yeah, because I, I remember <laughs> I was like, I, I was rolling past. I was like, what are those big like tent looking things? You know? What I'm yeah, saying? yeah. And then we walked in here. I had a hoodie on. You know what I'm saying? But uh, you were like, you're gonna get hot. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying, and I walked in here and we were sweating. You know what I'm saying. Yep. You, were, you was just showing sweating me around, <laughs> but but yeah, it's crazy because I've never seen anything like this, and I I don't know like I'm I mean probably I will one day, but like I like it's not mm-hmm. something I will look for. You know what I'm saying. You said the key there. You will one day. Yeah. To us, this is going to be the future of gardening. Really, it's going to be the future, man. We we believe we are at the forefront of the future of farming. Um, when you think about uh, increasing population. Mm. 
and current issues to sustain and feed this population. So as mm-hmm. the numbers increase, how are we going to be able to continue to feed this America yeah. with less land? Wow. Go vertical. Bring it indoors. Use what we did with our strategy was in the beginning was, uh-huh. you know how I said, how can we do the cheapest thing, find the cheapest route? Exactly. We took vacant land, vacant properties, and uh-huh. we developed them. Yeah. They were an unused land. They've been sitting there for years. Uh-huh. Um, and not the best locations because nobody wants to go and do anything in that location. Yeah. But we were willing to go in there, sell, saw what we can use this 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 property here that's being unused, on uh-huh. hers, and like, all right, so how can we turn this into something? Yeah. Um, and those were those were very beginning roots, and wow. that's, that's very where we started at. But yeah, man, I definitely think aquaponics is going to be the future. Hydroponics is another term you'll start hearing out there. Um, people growing, growing indoor year round, and you can get your plants down to the exact science, exact perfect yield, the exact nutrition that you need, yeah. and you can get it at the right time. So there's a lot of benefits. A lot exactly, one hundred percent. So, so did you grow up like? You and your dad like farming and, and growing plants together? Yeah, not you at did? all. No, not at all, man. Definitely sports, bro. Just yeah, sports. yeah, yeah. You know what, what I grew up on. Like, yeah. I think I got most of my stuff probably was my love for health and nutrition came from sports. Okay, having to take care of that body. One hundred percent. How can I get yeah. a better advantage through sports? Exactly. Realizing I'm losing because it took me to my it took me to my senior year in high school to. Freshman year of college to realize I was at a disadvantage based on my diet because mm. nobody in my family knew how to eat. Where we come from in our community, yeah. we got our collard greens. You know, I'm going to granny house. I'm getting dressing. Yep. I'm getting my sweet potatoes. Exactly. I'm eating good. Nice. I got my three plates. Nobody a salad. What's a salad? <laughs> What's your spinach? What's your aru- arugula? <laughs> Bruh, <I only> still <laughs> so you know that's is. where it came from. Trying to use food as a and as, as a performance advantage. Uh huh. And then realizing the the health benefits that it did to my body. That's yeah. where the love for the food came from. And I think that's amazing that you did this like with your father. You know what yes. I'm saying? Especially obviously being black. You know what I'm saying? You yes, and your dad yes. were able to do that together. Yeah. And partner and like really build some like now. Like, obviously, you're going to take it over, then hopefully, like, you can pass this on to your kids, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, this is at the forefront of, you know what I'm saying, urban farming, you know what I'm saying? So, this is going to be huge one day, and that's just crazy. So, like, do you ever plan on, like, expanding this, you know, going to other places, or, like, are you just really just want to stay stationed in Chicago? Yeah, man, so, that's a great question, and we get that question a lot. Um, We're very focused right now on um, building our roots in Chicago, building Mm -hmm. the best system, best network best foundation that we can do here you know exactly and before we can ever think about expanding expanding and um developing another neighborhood another urban community uh-huh. urban transformation network yeah um we have to develop our community first and 100%. we have to be a hundred percent effective out here mm-hmm. we have seen great strides over the years we have seen great impact mm-hmm. um but we haven't reached our goal yet i believe here um, to where I believe we can bring this model to another neighborhood and it be successful. Yeah, for and sure. And that's the biggest thing, you know. You talked about bringing down the generations. Mm-hmm. That's where the pressure comes on. Mm. The pressure comes. Really? On, the pressure comes on. I have to make the right moves so this thing can be there exactly in the future. And yeah. then the second hitter is okay. I get over that pressure of it being for the family. Uh-huh. Now the heaviest pressure is I'm putting myself. I'm putting the pressure on myself of making sure healthy, nutritious food is pumped into the communities where there's currently no healthy, nutritious food. Mm. So I have to make sure that I'm growing the right crops, that I'm teaching the right stuff. Exactly. That I know what we're doing because in they're going to in they're going to depend on us for the language because they can relate to us. They see us. Exactly. They drive then their mom house. They drive their grandma house. They got to drive past us. Mm-hmm. They come in. They go and see black people running the organization. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I when we have kids here for our educational classes, yeah. um, that's the thing that they love. That's when you see their eyes lit up. Yeah. And they never knew this was here. And for a quick example, I got a kid, a uh, part of our program. She asked me a great question. And she didn't know she was business minded. She was a sophomore. She was a sophomore in high school. Uh-huh. She was. You you usually get a group of like ten, and you might find three kids out of that group of ten that are super interested in agriculture and fish, right? Yeah, exactly. And out of that three, you try to target. You you try to get and pick their brains a little bit. Uh-huh. And she asked me a question. She's like, "So what do you guys do with the plants?" Same question you asked. Yeah. I said, "Well, I said, well, 
instead of answering her question, I said, well, we have to keep the lights on in here. So in order to keep the lights on, what, what do you think we're doing with the plants? And I presented so I wasn't sound smart. Uh-huh. She's like, well, you probably have to sell it. And I said, okay, now if we want to sell this, how can we make our most money? Well, she said, well, it'd probably be better to sell it closer so you don't have to go farther. Mm. So she's not talking business terms, yeah. but she's thinking strategically, right? So you so you get these kids at a young age, yeah. you find, you see their interest, you cultivate it, mm-hmm. be able to recognize it, and then you use your connections to build, help build their future. So wow, you, that's that's what we're about. That is amazing. Nah, I'll be I'll be uh, I'll be pressing yeah, that every yeah. time somebody <laughs> say something. Fine. <laughs> I was wondering if you was wondering why I'll be pressing that, but no, nah, that's amazing. So you be having kids in here. Um, like showing around classes, but also I remember you were telling me how you have a bunch of fish in here too. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying. So yeah, I like, love fish. Yeah, yeah, so like you said, <laughs> if you can't get to the shed aquarium, which I haven't even been to the shed aquarium. Yeah, you know what crazy. I'm saying. You said I got. You said I got to get there though. So Everybody go out to the shed aquarium. Great location. Yeah, I definitely shout got, out to the shed aquarium. I definitely got to check it out, man. I've not been, but that sounds like a dope. Like you know what I'm saying, it's a cool spot to check out. But so you have your own fish. I remember you showing me sharks, mm-hmm, catfish. Mm-hmm, you know what mm-hmm, I'm saying, different yeah. fish. You were saying. <laughs> <laughs> You got to tell the people about the, the story you had about fish and how, like, fish are pretty much like people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How, like, they don't be messing with each other. Like, yep. like yep. You, had to, you, you had to keep moving this one fish because he was kept, you know, being on the other fish, stuff like that. Yeah, he was so. beefing with his cousin. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. So, you know, what I found out is, like you said, like, I don't have that, that agricultural background. You know, uh-huh. I come from sports. That's the closest. Yeah. And, and um, business. So, exactly. learning about fish was new to me as well. And what we came to find out is a lot of our fish come from the sick family right Mm. so what we do here is we grow tilapia um from a baby stage we'll get tilapia in and then within like three to six months they're at a full stage ready to sell and be eaten Mm. um the other fish that we have which are kind of a part of our aquarium program and things that we do on the aqua side there is uh they're from the cichlid family and just like humans, you know, you don't get along with all everybody in your family. You know, you yeah. might have cousins that you're not really cool with. Exactly. That you see them, it might be a little side eye. You For know, real. you be like, man, I see him outside, it's gonna be something. Yeah, all, and, all, all, I say all skin folk and kin folk. Right, right. <laughs> exactly, exactly, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> it is the same thing. So, you know, we first being newbies, like, we got cichlids, they're from the same family, we put uh-huh. them in the same tank. Yeah. And we look and we're like, okay, like, they separate. Some when you first put them in there, you see some go to one side, some go to the other side. We're yeah. like, what's going on here? Okay. And then they start swimming around the tank a little bit, and then after a while, we come back, we see some have been attacking, some are fighting, or you see some when you put the food in. That's how you find out who's the person in charge in the tank. Yeah. Who's gonna go up there first, and not the other fish out there for it. When this one fish comes, I'm talking about all the other fish would just squirm and get out the way. Really? He didn't bully and beat them up, and we had to move them to other tanks. Yeah. Um, so learning about the relationships of fish, uh-huh. how uh, that's a great thing that we tell our tell our students to get ready to uh, kind of relate to them is, you know, how fish are kind of like us and how we're all in the same we're all in the same you know system and we're all on Earth trying yeah. to trying to eat. Trying exactly. To Facts, and then you even got into like fish poop. Is good fertilizer to, to grow yeah. plants, I guess. Yeah. I, I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. Uh, so that's the crazy thing, man. It's like aquaponics is a, it's new, but it's not. It's been around since the Aztecs. The Aztecs were actually one of the first people um, to start using aquaponics techniques. Really? Yeah, if you Google, you guys, go ahead and Google, look at the history of aquaponics, and you see this thing has been around for years. Since aquaponics. The, aquaponics since the AD era, AD, BC era. Yeah. And, um... So pretty much what how aquaponics works is you got fish and then you got hydroponics, which is your plant life. So it's a closed loop system, meaning that we have no waterways here, mm-hmm. and we also use ninety nine percent less water than your average farmer, right? So really, yeah, we use ninety nine percent less water than your ninety nine percent ninety nine percent less water than your average farmer, and we maximize I forgot the numbers, but it's like four times the amount of square feet that we use. Um, Per, uh, per plant. Yeah. So, a farmer might use, let's say, a hundred, a hundred square feet, right? Mm-hmm. And he might only be able to get a certain amount of lettuce heads. We can get five times that with that same amount of square footage Damn. by using the techniques and indoor growing techniques that we use. Yeah. But so aquaponics to break it down how it works is it's, it's the simple version of it is because it's very sciencey. Man, is, I can yeah, because it's it's. Right, right. Like right. you said, sports background. I'm used to. <laughs> I was the same way. Yeah, it's like so what. That's why I went because I because uh, I met you through DJ. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was like, "Yeah, my homie got an urban farm." I'm like, 
No disrespect. What is an urban farm? Yeah. And <laughs> you know DJ was on your earlier podcast. Yeah. You know, check the episode out. It was a good episode. For sure. No, uh, yeah. So I was like, what is an urban farm? He's like, bro, you just got to see it. <laughs> and that's why I was like, okay, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm call Don. And I'm going to see, like, what it is. And, and then yeah. I get on the phone with you. He's like, you just got to see it. Like, exactly. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and now that I'm here, I'm like, oh, this is yep. what you're talking about. I'm I had like, to see it. I, I had to see it. I'm like, because I've never seen nothing like this before in my life. You know, I didn't yeah. even know these were, you know, a thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, like, yeah. I, obviously, I know, I, you know, playing at Iowa, we got the AMF. Or yep. Whatever on our helmets and America needs farmers. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So yep. obviously, like this is just like I find it's like that new age farmer. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It's like that exactly. 2021 farmer. Like it's indoors. Like you said. Yep. 99 percent. Like 99 less percent of water. Like yep. Maximizing the square footage. Yeah. We're able to uh, grow year round. Uh huh. We got it's a control year round. Year round. Even out here. Even out here. January it's snowing, but inside here we growing lettuce. That's <laughs> crazy. We growing your spinach. Yeah. Uh, and we um. Yeah, and it's a controlled environment, so we're not affected by Mother Nature. Yeah. We don't have to deal with if it's going to be raining, sunny, droughting. We don't have to use, we don't use no chemicals. It's a complete soilless environment. Soilless so you grow your plants outside in soil. We grow our plants inside in water. Mm. Um, two totally different growing techniques. We don't spray our, our plants with chemicals. Ooh. Um, completely, truly organic. Yeah. Um, our produce lasts longer. You're getting our produce, since we're located in the neighborhood, um... You get in your process the day of cultivation. The day we pick it out of our beds is the day that you're going to receive your greens. Wow. Now, why is that? Why is that important? This is very important. This is what I found out being in the space. Mm-hmm. Um, nutrition. Everybody knows nutrition. Leafy greens. You got to get your daily greens in. Exactly. Everybody understands that now. What our parents might have understood, right? Mm-hmm. Well, when you go to a local store, you get your leafy greens. How long do they usually last you? Less than a week. Yeah, exactly. Less yeah. than a week. Three, four, four days if yeah. you're lucky, then they're going to get like a little wet. Uh, yeah. It might turn like a little yeah. brown. Brown, I was going to say brown. Brown, yeah. 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 You like look at the bottom of the box. You're like, it's over with. It's, yeah. well, you see that water. Yeah. It's over with. You're like, dang, I just bought these. Our plants are going to last you two weeks. Two weeks minimum. They're going to last you two weeks. That's cap. And it's why. And it's not, it's not the fact that, oh, our two growing weeks. technique is so superior. Yeah. It's just the fact that we're able, with our growing technique, we're able to grow in metro urban communities so you're able we're able to hit our local our local distributor we're able to hit the people right that day yeah so they're gonna get our our crops the day of harvest meaning that they have extra shelf life when you guys go to the store mm. and you guys get your greens you get your and lady sue you guys get your um your spinach your arugula uh-huh uh it's probably shipping from mexico or california yeah and then think all right well it's coming from california how long is it gonna take to get here yeah and wow. then how long is it sitting on the shelf before i go get it and then how long does it sit in my fridge before i actually use it damn a week then went past a week and a half it exactly. went past that's why it, yeah. it does not last oh, a long okay so when you're doing indoor techniques it allows you to be in locations that you don't normally have to be in yeah no you wouldn't dare set up a farm in the, on the west side of Chicago, outdoors, because what you're going to do seven, eight months out of the year. Exactly. You That's, ain't going to yeah, do anything. 100%. By the time you get plants to grow, like you're not going to be able to really grow yielding crops. So Facts. those are some of the benefits. But, oh, yeah, I didn't explain how it works. So real quick. So it's a closed loop system. meaning we have no water waste. So we usually, oh, we literally goodness. get our ba- baby, we, we, we raise tilapia here, uh-huh. and we get baby tilapia. Uh, about in about three months, they're big enough to go into our big tanks. Mm-hmm. Uh, our big tanks are like six thousand gallon tanks. They're very big. Wow. Um, they hold hundreds and hundreds of fish. Uh, the fish poop in that water. That water then gets filtered to a uh, to a system that then goes into our plant beds. Mm-hmm. So the plant beds behind us, all these plants right now are sitting on water. There's water being pumped into the sides. Yeah, and then, it, yeah. Yep, over here. And then there's yeah. water underneath them that they're flowing on rafts. Mm-hmm. So that fish poop water, which is actually filtered, filtered fish poop water, actually is very, very nutritious. So nutritious so that if we were to bag that water and to pour it on your garden... Uh, your plants will just start growing. Like your plants will grow. Are you serious? It, it's 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 like filling your body with with the max nutrients that it needs. Yeah. And you actually hitting all your daily micros, exactly. macros that you need to hit. Yeah. Uh, that's what we're doing to our plants. Oh. So the plants then sit on the water and they're absorbing all these nutri- nutrients, nutrients, and we move them through different stages of the water cycle, through the plant cycle actually, and. 
and then they grow to full lettuce heads. They grow to full basil heads. Yeah. Uh, the stems of the plants act the, actually act as filters to the water, then cleaning the water that is then repumped back into the fish. So it starts with baby fish, and we grow them to tilapia, big tilapia. Mm-hmm. They then poop into the water. Water is then filtered into the grow beds. Plants absorb, eat that water. Water goes back to the fish. Wow. Closed loop system, where's the water waste? The water goes back to the fish? It goes back to the fish. It's all closed, all closed loop here. We do have some water waste that we do let get out because we do have to clean it. We do course clean our water monthly we have clean yeah. schedules so uh-huh. water does go out the waste yeah but every water we do we try to you know put it in bags use as fertilizer use it for our outdoor gardens 100 percent. yeah no nah, so and then um you said you guys also you're, you're located here right in the west side of chicago so you're also able to give fresh produce to like those stores that like you know, obviously, because there's no, like, Mariano's or stuff like that, because I remember we talked about that. So, exactly. like, Mariano's, you know, Whole Foods and stuff like that out here. Yeah. So, y'all are able to give fresh produce to, like, people in, like, these under, you know, uh, like, you know, funded communities. Yeah, also. yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So, um, we try to focus on the areas that are actually labeled as food deserts. Food so deserts. Food deserts. I don't even know that's, I that's know a thing. That's a thing. That's, 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 that's a legal, the legal term the state uses yeah. when they're identifying certain areas is... Uh, this is considered uh, a food desert area, an area that needs significant help. It doesn't yeah. have access to certain food systems. Um, what that means is there is no Whole Foods. <laughs> there, <laughs> you don't have your Mariano's. You don't have your Trader Joe's. Uh, the closest thing you might get to a grocery store, the average grocery store, I believe, the footprint is 1.2 miles from your house. Is the average walking now? My numbers could be a little off there, but it's definitely around there. Yeah. Um. So imagine that. Ask yourself how how long does it take you to get to your grocery store? Um. And think about being in a community where you got disadvantages, where most people out here are using public transportation. Mm. Um. So at, you know, ask those questions. Exactly. Uh. So what we try to do is by being in these communities, we tr- we give away a lot. You know, last year we were able to give away twenty thousand lettuce heads. 21,000 letterheads, and we distribute these to our church partners and mm-hmm. help them give back to their congregation, to their community. And what that does is that brings that place as marketing. Exactly. And when I say marketing, I don't mean marketing dollars. I mean kids. We need kids. We need the youth. We need we need people in the community. So this helps us market to bring people. Where are these greens coming from? Why do these greens last so long? Why do mm-hmm. they taste so fresh? Why, yeah. do, why is that crunch hitting different? <laughs> well, the right. label says Earth Transformation Network, right. and then they realize it's that building they've been driving past uh-huh. this whole time. And, yeah. you know, then that's where the educational classes and all that stuff starts to come in. So... That's where that's where uh, that plays. We try to operate. The food, I like to think of it as our product is a closed loop system in the way it operates, and we also operate in a closed loop system mm-hmm. by us providing food to the community. Uh, it is then, it is actually well. I'll start here. I actually believe it starts with the education. Yes, one hundred percent. But educating the the community on how to live and live a more nutritious and healthier lifestyle and then teaching them growing techniques on how to properly grow plants um, you then grow on produce because in order to teach them they got to grow it mm-hmm. so the kids come here they grow they teach the produce they go home with produce that produce is then redistributed into the community so wow. the kids grow the produce in their community yeah. we distribute the produce to the community mm. and then that produce gets fed right back to those same kids families so it's a closed loop system creating a healthier community. Wow. And that's what you know, that's the aim here. That's the aim here. Exactly. Nah, I love that. No, nah, so um obviously I just got a side note for my podcast <laughs> people that I am in this urban farm right now. So like to get the full gist of this episode, definitely head to my YouTube channel, kicking it with JB, you know what I'm saying, and check out the the, the visual of this podcast. But no, so back to Don. So obviously you and your dad started this um you said twenty thirteen. Yes, yes. So how is it being like an entrepreneur? Because you have a you have a funny yeah. you have a funny uh <laughs> like definition of and like way of putting it. Yeah, I, I yeah. Um, yeah, we talked about that earlier. Yeah. Um, I started off. Uh, I don't really consider myself an entrepreneur, but a lot of people like to call me that. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I worked for a large financial institution all the way up until 2018. Uh huh. Um, while building this on the side, yeah. and then decided to take that leap. Mm-hmm. Um. 
and it was a tra- traditional story, you know, didn't necessarily hate my job, yeah. but definitely wasn't fulfilled at my job, you uh-huh. know. Wasn't, um, I was just going through the motions. Mm-hmm. My days were going through the motions, so. Yeah. Um, but the way I like to describe entrepreneurs, I don't consider myself an entrepreneur. I just consider myself a businessman. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I like to go by. Uh, I feel like entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs to me are hustlers. They they are jacks of the trade guys. They know they got three, four, five, ten plus different businesses. Yeah, eight, eight different streams of income. They big on that. From all different sides. They might yeah. have a real estate business, this type of business. They got yeah. all different type of things coming. Yeah, um, well, I think of... What I like to identify is, uh, and I think a businessman and innovators, oh. that's the lane I try to exist in. And when I look at those guys, I look at like a Steve Jobs. Yeah. I look at like a, um, oh man, I look at, uh, what am I, I look at. Uh, Jeff Bezos? Jeff Bezos is good too, but yeah. Jeff Bezos was, yeah, even those guys, yeah, the Jeff Bezos of the world, the Elon Musk. Yeah. Like, I don't, like people want to say they're entrepreneurs, but to me, they focused on one goal and one mission and one product. Mm. Yeah, they might have moved to a different product, but Elon Musk doesn't have, you know, 20, 30 different businesses that don't align yeah. with each other. Exactly. He might have four or five different businesses, SpaceX. He might have his Teslas. Mm-hmm. He might have his tunnels going. He might have his solar panels. But all those are around energy, efficient energy. Exactly. It makes going to space, expanding our, our capacity. Like, those things make sense they're aligned with his goal Jeff Bezos is doing around the same thing mm-hmm. those guys I don't consider entrepreneurs I consider like Gary V I think Gary V is yeah. a true entrepreneur Mark Gary Cuban v. I could consider Mark Cuban a true entrepreneur Facts. Um, so yeah that's kind of like my definition nah, 100% <laughs> so then then lastly like what so what are your like what are your goals going forward like with this now so obviously yeah. it's here it's established you know, you're doing great. You know what I'm saying. So, yeah, like, what, yeah. what, are your, what are your goals now? You, you and your dad. Um, the goals of this year, man, is to finish out this COVID, man. They really, oh, yeah. really How's push that? through that. How's that? That's like a little we, side note. It is. Did, like, did that affect y'all at all? It did. It did. It, it affected it, everybody. It did. It didn't affect us hugely, um, but it affected us because it affected our partners. So, mm. you know, grocery stores or yeah. restaurants. They weren't operate. They weren't operating. Excuse me. weren't operating at full capacity, so exactly. they weren't ordering as much. Yeah. Um, people weren't coming out to eat as much, so you know Couldn't. those things playing a part. Yeah. Um, but you know, government was very good and very supportive there. You know, we operate as a nonprofit. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I'm very proud of how we handled and went through that time, yeah. and we very pivoted. I think COVID showed the businesses that were unprepared and unable to pivot. Mm. Um, most of our tours were in person. You came here in person. Couldn't do that no more. Yeah. That's a revenue stream. That's gone. Exactly. So how you did virtual tours? Well, who wants to pay to see a virtual farm when they can just go on YouTube? Yeah. So how do you make it? How do you how do you attract kids that want to do this? Mm-hmm. VR. You make it a virtual reality. Wow. You give kids 3D boxes and yeah. allow, send them a link, allow them to have a 3D experience in the farm. So as if they're walking through it. Exactly. Um, so taking things to the next level. Yeah. Introduce, introducing kids to new technology. Mm-hmm. Um, I always say our next our next focus is uh, ag tech, bringing technology into agriculture, mm. getting ready and preparing these kids in the community for the future. Yeah, well, um, the jobs of today are going to be gone tomorrow. Exactly, um, they're going to be replaced by robots. Um, so basic programming is going to be considered. This is going to be a gem. You. Basic programming is going to be like your Excel. Mm. Before you were to get a job, when I was coming to the job market, you had to know Microsoft Suites. You got to know PowerPoint, Excel, all that stuff before. that. Those, those are like minimum requirements. They want somebody to be efficient in Excel and PowerPoint. Exactly. Eventually, having basic Python and programming experience for kids that are in middle school or getting high school now, that's going to start to become a requirement to the mm-hmm. field. You're going to have to understand how to how to control bots and how to do customer service through technology. So yeah. bringing technology in, uh, into the urban communities is our next goal. Um, we're set up to do that nice. by by being inside. So that gives us different technology advantages here. Mm-hmm. Um, working on different robotics projects now, data programming projects, trying to teach kids on those things and getting them not just... N- agriculture you know so i try to operate everything or we here 
definitely want to say I because it's definitely a big team here. Mm-hmm. Um, we try to operate everything closed loop, everything in a circle. Yeah. Everything should come back and operate and keep flowing. That's how you keep this thing rolling. Exactly. Um, we teach kids. If we can teach kids how to program, we we supply the bot. They mm-hmm. program our bot. Mm-hmm. Our bot plants the crops. Those crops are then pumped into the community. Well, the kids have to understand agriculture in order to properly program some type of machine to plant. Yeah. If you want a, a, a machine to plant spinach, you have to know how spinach grows, exactly. which times are the best times to water it, yeah. how close should each plant be to each other. Wow. So you have to know those little basic things on agriculture in order to program the bot. So these kids think they're learning technology, but they're really learning agriculture. Yeah. And they're learning technology, too. Exactly. So that's for the future, man. That's that's what we're focused on now. Now, I definitely think tech is the future. I actually have a... Uh uh, they'll sit by this time they'll hopefully see. I have a, nice. a a podcast with one of my homegirls who's in tech right now. Just how big it is right now. So like I was saying, man, this is amazing. What you got going here, I think, is so dope because I feel like you you are in a business of serving people. Yes, you know what I'm saying. Like you, I feel like you a person that's like walking in purpose. Because I we was I was just talking about this. I'm still a person searching mm. for my purpose, searching for like what do I really want to do? Yeah, with my yeah. Life. You know what I'm saying. I feel like you is so cool because you are helping. These communities that are in need, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying, and and providing things that, that that wouldn't be provided for had you and your you know your your, your all of your team's business yeah had not yeah. been here for sure you know what I'm saying so I think that's amazing man I just want to say thank you for thank for you. coming on the pod man so where can thank people you follow me. you where can people find you I don't know if you're a social media guy or yeah how can yeah they support like for so sure for do? sure you know uh, social media stages are early now uh, not ready for our <laughs> social media. Big appearance yet um, yeah, yeah, But yeah You can definitely find us At Urban Transformation Network dot org That's Urban Transformation Network dot org In or Metro Farms um, Yeah Located in Chicago area We're one out of only two Two or three aquaponics Companies In Chicago One out of two um, Yeah I think there's two There was another one They ended up going out of business Um mm-hmm. It's tough business to run a lot of companies that have tried this and I'm going out of business. Yeah. Um, but that's been an advantage here. Come from a business background, we've been able to adapt. Sustain. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, Urban Transformation Network.org. You can email us. We got volunteer opportunities out there. Um, we'll be opening up to for tours pretty soon once everything gets back and going. So please feel free to come on a tour to our site and check out this indoor experience. Wow, that's amazing. Man, so Thank y'all for coming to another episode of Kicking It With JB. Thank you, Don, for taking the time. I know you're a busy man. Thank you man. for having me. We had, we had to shuffle schedules yeah, to, yeah. To, to, to finally align, man. But thank you for, for taking the time. This is amazing what you got going here, like I said. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe for my YouTubers. And then, you know what I'm saying, leave a leave a review uh, and a comment for my for my podcast on my major podcast, man. Thank y'all again for, for coming to Kicking It With JB. And I appreciate you, brother. Thank you for having me, bro. You know what I'm saying? But uh, that's, that's an episode. Thank you. Hey, have a good one.